I've got two cones here that make a triangle with a point here. You jump forward and you plant on your left and you jump and rotate and land forward on so this So like one. a reckless type of Very 180 similar, or yeah, a 90 there? 180. But what we can do is alter that, move this back one in a little, uh -huh. jump forward, jump backwards, land on the plate backwards. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Garage Strength Podcast, sponsored by, are these sponsored by Range Meal Bars? I think they are a sponsor. 700 calories. I still can't get over that. <laughs> Yo, and I'm here with four-time co-author, world champion of the year. Don't forget my, my crown. And crown of the king of the PA press, yeah. Earl Kunkel. He can PA press more than most people can back squat. Oh, I guess actually Dude, probably can. People back squat in 250, like that's yeah, not happening. I know. Most most people, I mean, people watching this podcast. Dude, I want to tell you. Are those, is it NARP or whatever? Is the, yeah, not athletic, uh, a regular, regular person. person. Uh, David Lucas has a shirt that says that. Um, we had a guy in the chat today, Harry. I think it's Harry from UK, if I remember. And he goes, I'm on... I started listening to Masters of Sport podcast, so he hadn't been at the point where we changed the name. And this was, he was like, I, I found it seven days ago. I'm now on episode 31. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, dude, he was bringing up stuff that I've forgotten. <laughs> He's like, my goal is to catch up by two weeks from now. And I was like, what? He's like, dude, I'm all in. And he, and he, he told me the pod, like the one he's at. Like, dude, we probably filmed those almost two years ago. Yeah. And I remember when we started, I said to you, I was like, I can show up every day for a year. Are you going to be able to do it too? And it's almost two, three years now? I think it's two years. Two years? I want to say it's two and years. we said we would need about a half a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to somewhere get there. around like three, five so years. So we're, we're getting we're close. At. Yeah. And whatever. At this point, it's just, it's in the routine. I, it's fun. I think that's the other thing is it's like, I mean, this is almost what we were talking about off air is like something like a podcast. So many people start them and stop them. And I probably had like five before I did this. Yeah. And then you also have one. I am a persistent SOB. I will tell you that. And it's like, okay, if we can stay in, and this is what I was saying off the air. It's like, if you stay in the game long enough, dude, when you're persistent and both of us are very persistent, we have Pennsylvania Dutch in us. So we're bullheaded. Yeah. <laughs> and that also means we'll do the same dumb shit way too many times before we learn from it <laughs> yeah, we will. and that's my forte <laughs> is just being really stupid yeah but but just doing it enough that i'm my stupid outlasts other people's intelligence and i foresee <laughs> <laughs> that should be a clip that we put on the well, on instagram my stupid will last, outlast people's intelligence <laughs> that's a quote that should be a dane miller t-shirt you need quote. a t-shirt like with the head turned to the side <laughs> just like the big head there it's, <laughs> it's a weird goofy picture of me yeah but it, it's like if we stick at it long enough it's gonna we're gonna figure out what to do with it strategically yeah without that's question it. and it's just like training agility yeah <laughs> big time play agility yeah make all those big touchdown runs oh man imagine the momentum of your body hurling across the field the force you exert is needed to break the impulse of the biomechanical movement decelerating the body to quickly accelerate to another direction dane how does this all filter into agility i think um uh, one of the biggest aspects around around agility is looking at like breaking down in, in its simplest form. And, and I, I, I know I've said this thousands of times on, on the podcast is like, to me, the pinnacle point of agile is Barry Sanders. Like yeah, the way he would run and he would run like a freaking Mack truck, but also cut like a, a Ferrari. Yeah, he was... And, I can only imagine the size of his legs in person. Well, dude, and I also because he wasn't a big. No, he's like five eight. Yeah, he wasn't like overly tall, but like you know, two hundred twenty pounds at five eight. Like, how thick are you? So I remember we I had a high school football camp where Jeremiah Trotter was the the camp the guy who ran the camp. Uh -huh. and you got to ask him questions at the end, and this was back when Mike Allstott and he played against Barry Sanders, Wark Dunn, all those guys, right? So we people were asking him who hit the hardest. And everybody's like, Mike Allstott's got to hit hard. And he's like, Allstott's hard to take down because he's big. 
but he doesn't hurt because you have such a big mass to hit. So like you can hit him and you're on a broad spectrum of his body. But he was like, he mentioned Wark Dunn was a total savage to hit because he was so small. Yeah. And it would run you over. But he was like, Barry Sanders felt like you were running into a wall, like a wall <laughs> that was moving. And he's like, you just couldn't do anything because you didn't, you never knew where he was cutting. And he could cut with such force that when he was coming out of his cut, he's lowering his shoulder and there's, you could only hit him in one spot to really get him down. And he was still bringing And his balance was through the roof too. Yeah. And it's almost like that rigid trunk leads to making it so hard to, to tackle him. And I think that, you know, to get away from the specific sport of football, but looking at agility in, in, in the conversation, it's like if you factor in decelerating, if you factor in accelerating, and then if you factor in like, angles so joint angles uh the factor in trunk control and then i'm trying to think what else like, is there like stopping power in there then too or do you consider that part of, of decel the deceleration yeah, yeah the stopping power would be like if i can stop the fastest whoever slows down the fastest is very likely the same individual who can get to their top end the fastest yeah most that's a good recipe for having the most agility yeah yeah not necessarily 100%. And to speak to Barry Sanders too. I remember being a kid watching him, you know, on TV like he was kind of my idol. Like I was someone who hated Emmett Smith. I don't know why. Like he, <laughs> yeah. he's incredible. Like yeah. Oh, he that's did just it. just like young kids. Yeah, so. he did it so long. Like no wonder he has the record. It's like, yeah, but that's a testament too yeah, to yeah. be able to do it yeah. that long, especially in a sport like that at that There's position. a highlight video of Emmett Smith on YouTube that is the best blocks of Emmett Smith and it's guys coming off blitzing and him just decleating him <laughs> and it's like that video made me be like all right i like him yeah <laughs> so but like little kid me yeah did he's, it he's played for the cowboys yeah. <laughs> that too that i'll never i'll i don't, don't want to say never but <laughs> really not a cowboy fan at all um but like barry sanders i always felt he got like caught yeah yeah like he could get like a 40 but he someone would catch him all the time he yeah. did have some breakaways though he had a lot of breakaways I remember. Keep in mind, he played for the Lions as well. I did have him on my fantasy football team as two thousand yard rushing season. Oh, that's seasons. good. Yeah, yeah. Like when I first started getting into that stuff, I refuse to do it now as an adult. I'm like, I'm not wasting my Sunday watching yeah, I, TV all day. I think that's a good move, by the way. But going back to the Just super agile, right? Yeah, like, yeah. and kind of a predecessor to like what backs do now. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, for you sure. Got to be able to catch the ball too. You got to go out like. Yep. Pre Marshall Falk, pre LT, yep, yep. Priest Holmes, when like the position yeah, yeah. started changing more and more. It was a drastic change at that yeah. point. And I even think like if you think about the virtual summit when and the clip I used, I don't know if you remember the clip I used of Saquon Barkley. Yeah, with that one handed catch well, and just stopping. stopping. And it's like that's to me the quintessential modern day agility based football movement. And I think like you look at you know, so like unilateral breaking power. Yes. And yeah. a balance within that unilateral breaking power. And that balance comes from stability in the joints and then trunk control as well, right? Yes. Like that's yeah. the everything together. And I think that it so so the lore you know, I know I wanted to move on from the football and Barry Sanders talk, but Barry Sanders was also known to back squat over six hundred pounds. Jeepers. So, yeah. So it's like the lure of that strength applied at high speed and i think that's where like the functional group misses out like it's strength at speed and i talked about this where it's like r.a roman who's the weightlifting coach for the soviet union for quite a bit in the 70s and 80s would say there's always a difference between lifting heavyweight and lifting heavyweight fast and that's the big factor of like it's the same thing in the sports world. So if you're training for agility, you've got to be able to help your athletes chunk at different speeds, chunk movement patterns at different speeds, and then learn how to use that max strength in an agile, an agile situation. And like that max strength that might be needed for Jokic hitting a crazy spin. Yeah. Pivot, pivot, shoot, whatever he's doing, whatever absurd thing he's doing is going to be a different level of max strength versus a linebacker scraping down hitting the hole and then coming filling the hole to make the right. play you know and it's like that's where the strength coach has to be in in tune with the sport and 
the specificity needed for the yeah, sport. Yeah, what type of body type do you need with there? Like, exactly, yeah. So in a sport like basketball, you need to be – you need less wobble, right? Yeah, yeah, like, literally. Where football, you can get away with having more muscular, lean yeah. wobble to you. Yep. But basketball, like, it's really not going to pay off for you. No. So, all right, maybe you don't need – you don't need a 600-pound back squat no. in basketball. You don't need it. But you do need a frame that can stay vertical in the air – Yep. When contact's made. Yep. Um, and that I'm just saying that related to the trunk control, which is a big part of mm -hmm. agility. And there's a part of me, too, that wants to say, like, what's agility like in the air? And I think of, like, a high jumper, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. try to get in that position. Yep. Just a high jumper, a pole vaulter. I don't think I could do it. And I don't consider myself unathletic in any way. Yeah. And I don't consider myself unmobile in any way no, too for sure to the point where you have told me when i started training here you're a little too hyper mobile we need to yeah tighten. you have it you you could you you have the goods can you do that i might I, be a little old to learn well now yeah <laughs> now for sure especially because the high jump is is a massive collision between and i think that's like the other factor is that if we're looking at agility it's a collision with it's a ground reaction force collision is what it is. Your foot versus the planet. What's the energy that you're going to get out of it? Can you use that energy to then change direction and create some illusionary pattern that could help you juke your opponent? And I yeah. think that's the other thing is like the illusionary pattern or the illusion of where you're going is key. And it's all won on the battle with the ground. And that's something... Football, you could say like Mahomes, what he does with his head and his eyes. Yep. Or someone like Joker in basketball. Yep. Or even someone as old as like Magic Johnson with how they would use yeah, yeah. their head yeah. to give that illusion. Yeah, the classic video of him like... Yeah, look like, away. Yeah, and it's yeah. like everyone, what are you looking at? Let me look over there too. But I, I'm already seeing over here right. you know, the larger periphery of everything. That's where that's where the trunk control, that, that trunk control factors in then closer that with the quiet eye which we had talked about yeah. a little bit where it's like i mean not in this podcast in the past but where the quiet eye is essentially the the ability you know think about the classic and i hope everybody knows this this play of willie mays hawking down at like 405 feet a, a catch directly over his head and then turning and, and whipping crazy yeah and it's like bo jackson's you know catch on the run throw a dime to third base like the quiet eye is the connective point between trunk control that you train in the gym and the skill that you're exhibiting on the competitive field. Yeah. Like the bridge is the quiet eye. And it's like, if you don't have the trunk control, you don't have that. Yeah, because your head, your bobble you're bobblehead. Yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> all over the place. Your, your body is creating too much noise to be able to make the play. Like Justin Jefferson is likely the master in the NFL currently as a wide receiver of quiet eye. That's he's got great hands. Like he's he's able to run high speed and make absurd catches. So it's like, how can you develop that in a normal kid in a normal strength training system where, you know, these yeah. kids don't have that that let's go into ability. that a little bit. So like exercises maybe that I can do that will have me decelerating, accelerating, trunk control in there. And then like unilateral, bilateral, and sort of this quiet eye element as well. And so maybe, I would, if we got even more advanced, like how can you do the illusory, pra illusionary practices as well? Then too, like I would start like I like my first thought is always like you start with some type of slow eccentric pause in the whole front squat or back squat. So and, just to develop the strength aspect, of yeah, it first. And, and the trunk. Yeah, the, the general aspect of the trunk. And then you go into like auditory command, okay? Now you pause and go. Well, now, then if you do auditory command, then you start to bring in the eye where you still have a ball moving over here. Or if I throw a red Frisbee, you do a double bounce. If I throw a green Frisbee, you do a single bounce out of the bottom. So like, now there's like a computational yes, thing going on with the yeah, brain. And it, it sounds hokey, but you can get really strong doing stuff like that. And then as that builds and you go from – like a back squat, a single leg squat, a front squat. Now you're doing those those movement patterns that are going to help develop the general strength. Then you would go into, all right, well, let's do a, a hide and jump with a pause. Now let's go to a hide and jump with a side with the side. So part. we're getting into plyometrics now. We're yeah. Moving so now you away from absolute strength movements into plyometric movements that are that, simple. 
but still have a tremendous amount of intensity, if you will, because the force put out in a plyometric is equal to, if not higher than, than at a times. squat. Yeah, and, and that's why I would say with like a, a kid who's in middle school, like I'm thinking about Lincoln right now, like my my oldest, like. I don't know. Just get them to do stair jumps first. Get yeah. them to do jump lunges in place and then pause. Get them to do jump lunges, pause, and then rotate. And it's like, okay, get them to do jump lunges uh, and and rotate or jump lunges to a box. And it's like the 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 development is just like this exploding thought. Now, now, then you start to bring in. Okay, now you got the trunk control at high speed. You got the trunk control at slower speeds. You got the trunk control with high weight. So the high speeds plyometrics, slower speeds absolute strength. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then you got to teach them how to get super strong with the absolute strength movements, and then teach them how to keep moving twitchy with the fast movements. And then you start mo- so they don't in- become a power lifter. <laughs> yes, I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then you start to factor in jump series. Uh, reflexive movements and those patterns to really build All everything right. out. Just off the top of your head, I don't think you have this movement. You may. If I'm trying to teach a kid and I want to give him a jump series with a step back into a jumper, what's a plyometric series I could do with that? That like sort of patterning or even a reflexive movement if you okay, have it. Okay, so right it. now I have, I've got two cones here that make a triangle with a point here. You jump forward and you plant on your left and you jump and rotate and land forward on so this So like one. a reckless type of Very 180 similar, or yeah, a 90 there? 180. So, all right, so. But what we can do is alter that, move this back one in a little, uh-huh. jump forward, jump backwards, land on the plate backwards. So, all right. Now you want to set it up so it's safe. Triangle. Yep. Me as the athlete, I'm on the base on the left hand side yep i jump forward to the top of the triangle and you land you would land on your right and rotate all the way around land on my right and then you would rotate land on your left on the on the left yeah so it's almost like i'm yeah. almost like turning as i go there yeah okay so what i would do with that movement and and we i think we are terming that basketball series two okay uh we're trying to get better with our naming capacity yeah. here so the next thing I would do, you would, know what? Comment down below if you're watching on YouTube or yeah, something. Like, yeah, what would be some us, good please. names for jump series around like certain movements? We will gladly take a, you know to suggestions and try to like, all right, here's a movement here, identify it because we're only so many eyes yeah. too on it, and like, and we live in a bubble. Yeah. So I would then go, okay, you got the base and the t- the point up top, and I would just move this this one in a little where it would be like, um. Okay, I actually just got an idea. You would jump off the left, land on the right, jump over a mini hurdle, land on the left, and jump. Okay. And it's like that could be a real easy thing that you do to both sides. And you just, for three weeks, it's easy. It's just boom. It's boom, boom, jump. Boom, 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 jump. And it's just like you don't have to get crazy with it. You just have to execute, execute, execute. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. Now you have it. All right. Now my next thing is say um, Dirk Nowitzki, right? Yeah, we'll stick with let's stick with the basketball because it's a little out of your wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. Um, Taman deals a lot with basketball yeah. players too, and like it's not it's not something I think you said you consume. Like you don't watch a lot of basketball or haven't right. like it wasn't something as a kid you would be like, oh, I'm gonna watch NBA right. Finals this right. week or something like that. Um, Dirk Nowitzki worked with his coach. I forget the guy's yeah, name, but yeah, like I that. developed all his moves off him. Later in Dirk's career, he developed sort of this one-legged step back type of jump, yep, jump shot where he like it was a fade away, like a falling fade, yeah, and basically off one leg, knee up, and because he's seven foot tall, like it, it was indefensible almost, like maybe Kevin Garnett could defend it, like right, right. the best Somebody defender, else, yeah. big man defender of the generation type of thing. If I'm trying to I don't, I'm not Dirk Nowitzki. I don't have that, but I want to try to develop that athletic capability as a kid. Yeah. What's an exercise, a reflexive exercise maybe that I could do, or how could I start chunking that movement to be able to do something like I that? I would have, I would do a single leg. Well, one, again, I would, I would just do single leg squats, skater squats. I would try to develop like walking lunges, nothing crazy weight, just 
getting this is proficient with developing gen- the general requisite part. unilateral strength to yeah. even be able to think about performing the movement. And while I'm doing that, I'd be playing around with like a backwards jump to a to a vertical jump. I would go backwards. I would watch Novitski's breakdown, and I would like to do that myself. And then, then I would start to go. Okay, I'm going to hold a dumbbell in my left hand. I'm going to land in. Uh, jump off my left foot and I'm going to do a dumbbell snatch into a hip lock with my right knee. So that would be now I'm starting to add in some weight. Another thing you could do is do like a, uh, you have a band and you jump backwards in the band and then you jump vertically. Uh, and it's like, I'm almost picturing a, a shot put glide. Yeah. To land to hip Absolutely. lock. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And that's where, again, I, I know I oftentimes will relate things to wrestling or to track. Well, that well, doesn't surprise me mainly because you've that's coached my... a world bronze medalist yeah. like <laughs> in wrestling. In wrestling, you've coached like what did tra- field sports more? Yeah, in but track. like Olympic athletes and stuff and things it So I, I look through that lens and I think about someone like Joe Thomas who is arguably like top 3 left tackles of all time. Who was a shot putter, right? He was a shot putter and his entire movement pattern was a glide. And it's like what you just said why why wouldn't we do that like that's what the best of the best of all time like someone took a movement from another sport and then made that their technique in a sport that is as complicated as complex as football so for Novitsky, it's like the the you what you could do with that is it's I, i think this is where we hesitate to really expand because we don't want to be labeled as Joel Seedman. We don't want to be labeled as like the functional guy. But like, dude, I like looking at something like that, and I'm probably going to go home and screen record three Novitsky highlights. And yeah. Be like, All right. What can I do to to help? Somebody? There's some videos of him working out with his coach. I've seen some of which that. Which is like, it's, it's interesting cool. to watch. Like, uh, you know, they're going back and forth, just doing the same movement over and over. And again. that's where I think when you when you watch a sport a sport like basketball, it's a the every all of the big moves that you see are all chunked portions of a, of a more meta thing. Like you look at like uh, uh, a movement that Novitsky did, he practiced thousands of times. It wasn't something he made up, but then he sequenced them together. And so it looks crazy, but it's a sequence of things that he's chunked in the past. Yeah. I forget where I read it, but I like live. It's one of the things I live by. Yeah. Like I want to do something complicated. I want it to look complex. And it's just like, well, I have to do a simple thing on top of a simple thing. Yeah. And at some point, all the simple things come up and it looks really crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like go ahead and just write zero and one over and over again. Listen for a bit. Okay. So dude, it's so funny that you said this because I was talking with Rudy Winkler about Ode to Joy again. And he and I all have these classical music yeah. discussions and i played in the song promontory, promontory from uh last of the mohicans it's like one of my it's just like one of those songs that i i could listen to if i was going to a, to battle like i yeah. just love it um but we were literally saying that like listen to ode to joy and if you don't like it you probably don't have a soul first of all but if you really <laughs> think about it it's just the it's people singing 30 instruments going at once but everybody at, at one moment they're they're playing one note. Yeah. And everybody's playing one note. But then they're doing that 90 times in a moment because of the layers of sound over top of it and that's what makes it so complex. So what you just said is not just accurate for yeah, basketball or wrestling or football. It's literally life. It's like it's dude, like a universal thing. Yeah, it's like uh, what the hell? That's literally that easy. Yeah. Get your uh how do I say it? find your inspiration from something outside of what you do yeah. to impact what you do. And yeah. it, I don't know. We're getting philosophical. Someone's going to comment about how <laughs> podcast starts here. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. Um, I think we have to get into the overrated underrated. Already. All right, let's go. Man, I felt like we could have kept going too, yeah. but this is where we're at. Don't forget the range bar. If you're ever like going for a hike, a few hours, big hike, big hike, man, I swear I could do two sessions on one of these. Like I could do an AM and PM. Well, I'm gonna try and do a 16 mile run on Saturday. Oh, you I definitely got to take like, one with you. Should I have one of these? All right. I think I put this in here because we were gonna t- the talk about plyometrics. We didn't, and I put this one in here because upper body stuff. But it may also be accommodating resistance too. 
banded push-ups. Overrated, underrated. Oh, that's tough because like I I like using them. Honestly, I think they're probably underrated. I I would say they're underrated because I don't see people doing them a lot. Yeah, they smoke you in such a My weird way. My triceps get so yes. swole. Like, and I don't know why. And it's always like, like it just feels like it's blasting out of my the yeah. back of my arm. Yeah, I I I like it because of the tension at the top. And I think too, it's like you you can feel it in your pecs more so than you would a, a typical. And there's like push extra up. DTC in there too. Yeah, like everyone forgets. You like sink. you do a push up, like you're in a plank, like yep. And if you do the push up like a gymnast does it, like and you hollow body to yeah. it, like yeah, you're like that, like yeah, really squeezing and it. You mate, I see this in my young son, like when he does his push up, it's not a lack of upper body strength that it looks horrible. It's, he sinks it's, and then it's he worms up. it because he doesn't hold it. Like yeah. the trunk part is what's missing. One hundred percent. All right, next one, overrated, underrated. Oh god, Here agility we go. ladders, overrated. <laughs> they like the agility. Ra- okay. I've gotten flack for this. The agility ladder is 100% overrated. However, I will say there's things that you can do that are beneficial from it. I think it's a great warm up. I think it's good. I think you can set up moves off of it. Like you could say, like, I'm going to cut. I'm going to come out like ten a 10 yard sprint and I'm going to plant in this agility ladder and cut out. Or maybe I'm going to go plant and then like a jump cut out of it, whatever, right? I think that's. It's a good warm up. I think there's there's a way you can use it. I've used it with with Nick's group. We would do it sometimes where uh, we would have like the sled, and then it was like active rest. We would do we would do footwork with okay. it. Okay, I think that's effective. Uh, and again, I, the the targeted the targeted cuts, but like guys just live on it and live on it, and then you get them on the field to actually run, and it's like, dude, you're slow. Like, come yeah. on, you just pull sleds. Feels like it's a to your thing like the overrated it's an overused tool yeah 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 like way, you're prescribing it too much yeah like, yeah there's way bigger things that you can attack all right overrated underrated parachutes overrated overrated because the uh the wind differential changes drastically and you can't actually measure that on a regular basis lack of a constant yeah so there's a lack of a constant there's uh there's not a ton of research on them and my my understanding actually there's a book up there called like the soviet training principles and they talked about valerie borzov who won the olympics in the 100 meters in 1972 was telling people that he had trained with parachutes and that's sort of like when all the lore started and like it came it came back that like he did like 10 sessions with them or something and it was like not like charlie francis came out and was like I asked Borzhov about it or Borzhov, whatever his name was, and he didn't really do that. Like, that's not what he yeah, was Yeah, it was like, with. it was almost, I don't want to say like, but it was the functional part of his whole training. Like, yeah. it was something he did do, but it, it wasn't, wasn't, that it wasn't, wasn't the bread training. and butter. No, like, yeah. It was sort of like, you know, maybe a seasoning you put on it. They actually took, well, yeah. Dude, they actually, they, rumor is they came up with this con- contraption to like, piece him in and they could move it at like sub 10 second speeds okay and so it, it would like drag him yeah it would be like like an over speed training that was on a track and that was like the rumor that that i've heard like i remember dr b even saying like he's he didn't ever work with a guy but he's pretty sure that's what he was doing oh that's pretty cool yeah i'm just gonna speed you up a little bit fast forward, yeah and you're gonna have to learn it. i'm sure yeah. he's doing drugs too <laughs> Two times speed. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Either or. Hey, by the way, I wanted to bring up my uh, my uh, my mistake from last week. Oh, go ahead. Do you want me the to roots? Do the roots are better than Jedi mind tricks. You convinced yourself this week, just so everyone knows. Dane might have like voxed me four times this week. <laughs> telling me how sorry he was he answered that way <laughs> and he's like i've been listening to black thought i've been listening to the roots I, i've been listening to things fall apart i've been listening to do you want more I, i've been listening to all this stuff but he's just like i don't even know why i said that now i, I it, it's like sometimes i just have my reaction and i don't i don't filter yeah. it. like i've never seen him lament something so yeah. much over like a. I just wanted to bring it up how i felt yeah i i can 
I, I have records. I have receipts of it, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. I got receipts. Yeah. I got receipts. <laughs> All right, either or. You better answer this one correctly. Oh, geez. More pressure. Now, I know you don't have maybe the cultural one with this because it's just not your. Yeah. All right. Dark side or Thanos? You're asking because of your shirt. Yeah. Dark side. Come on. Good. I'm glad you <laughs> yeah. answered correctly. Can I can I just comment? <laughs> you said dark side, and the first thing that popped into my head was dark side of the moon, and I was gonna jump all over dark side. Yeah. I was gonna be like, oh, dark side, dude. All you right. have no idea. That's okay with the connotation. And then you said Thanos, and I was like, is that a King yeah. Crimson album that I never listened to? <laughs> like literally, that was my thought process. No, was no. like, no, that wasn't a King Crimson album. I wish I was that cool to do like prog rock stuff for <laughs> yeah. you. Well, then I went through like their first four albums. I'm like, uh, oh, didn't they have one called Red and Court of the Crimson King? I think was it Yes or King Crimson? I w- I think someone else. It wasn't me, but someone I was like we were working out was playing King Crimson and was putting something on from the '90s maybe by me. I think it was King Crimson. Um, Dude, they have a song called Thela Hunjinjit. It is so good, and it's from like 91. Thela Hunjinjit. It may have been. Whatever it was, it was a doom metal track. Okay, this was... The, this. And I was just like, this is like... It's not like I don't like it. I just... I don't listen to it. Like, I haven't yeah. dived into the discography. Like, I still like buy music. I don't stream right. music. Like, right. I just... I, I'd be overwhelmed with that much choice. I wouldn't know what to do. I love that much choice, dude. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. All right, let's get to the just audience from, questions. Just reminds me of college. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is from Discord. Oh, nice. Let's go. We're over a thousand. Have we ever had a Discord question? Yes. Okay. Constantly. I always thought it was coming. From, I, no. Yeah. I was thinking YouTube community. Sorry. That this was, is Jesus is American. All right. Is what their name is. Yo, I'm pretty sure too in our Discord that is the legit. Um, what's his name? Tur- Tarakti. Tarak. I'm pretty sure. I talked to him in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. If that's not him, that's def. I'm the, pretty sure it's his rep. Like it might be him or puts off. Yeah. Who like does it? Because I went in the like profile and clicked the link tree, and it's like legit. It's what it is. Like yeah. it's all his stuff. So welcome. <laughs> Very happy. Yeah. All right. Jesus is American. Um, how long does it take to lose muscular endurance or speed endurance? I've been just playing basketball for three weeks now without lifting, and at first my technique was getting sharper, but now I feel like my CNS isn't firing like it used to. Muscular endurance or speed endurance? Muscular endurance from, dude, uh, who was it that just posted a whole paper on breakdown of endurance? It it takes like 25 to 30 days. Muscular en- or speed endurance, so like – Speed is more like 14 to like 18 days. So you're probably noticing your speed breakdown a lot faster. You're not going to lose muscular endurance necessarily when you're playing basketball or whatever sport because you're still getting endurance-based work. Now, you might notice it locally if you go in and do like a set of bench press and you're like, man, my pecs are shot because you haven't been training locally. But globally, you wouldn't notice it the endurance wise. You would speed wise, you would certainly notice it within two two and a half weeks. Man, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, Jesus is American for helping me learn something today. Um, this is from the YouTube community. Okay. Even though lately, um, one of the people I follow on Twitter just wrote like a New York Times best selling book, and I I didn't know this, but YT is the uh, shorthand for white too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, see, taught you something, too. Yeah. So every time I see, I know it's YouTube here, but anyway. Yeah, then you see it, and you're like, white. Yeah. <laughs> um, YouTube community, um, Alan Moran 9551, at Alan Moran. What explosive strength exercises do you recommend for boxing? Any suggestions on footwork speed drills? Thanks. Explosive, str- okay, so we just did a knockout boxing video. I would say, like, shuffle side med ball shot put throws uh is probably my favorite like a shuffle shot put throw for for explosiveness in the trunk to the upper body um i actually think what i would do one i would do general plyometrics pretty frequently Mm -hmm. um and i actually break it down on the video where i would say you should do plyometrics like 60 minutes a week so like two bouts of 30 minutes probably 
But then I would also meet like if I if I had a fighter who came to me and was like, "Yo, I want to hire you to to be one of my coaches to help me win a world title." I would break down their three best moves. I would look at how they set them up and then I would watch their opponent and I would watch I would literally watch hours of their opponent and then I would come up with a with a series on how their opponent moves and set up the plyometric off of that opponent's patterns and that would be how we would set up their their man offense. you just gave that away for free yeah, I mean, I would. It would take a lot to do it, but I, I would love to do something. Well, the, like that. the work would take time, but like the whole the mindset pet. and what needs to be done to make it happen. Like, yeah, I mean, you're I, welcome out there. Me too. Thank you for yeah, sharing that with me. No problem. Me. I appreciate it. Try it. Try it. That's all, right. all we got. Big play agility, dude. Big play agility. Knock you out agility set it up, at knock the end out, there, yeah, and make sure that you can decelerate at the fastest clip possible. Until next time, peace. Later.